The block diagram is used to represent a transfer function or the relationship between the input and output of a system. Table 1 prevents some of the common block diagram relationships and their equivalent representations. The first one we have is a series, y equals g1, g2, r, where g1 and g2 are head to tail. The second one is parallel, where y is equal to g1 plus g2 times r, and here we have them where they're actually connected in parallel on each side. The next is a summing point, similar to when we feed back the sensor data to create the error signal. And we have a left summing point where y is equal to g times r plus or minus x. We could also have a right summing point shown here where g of s will eventually be a pre-filter in subsequent weeks. And that would be y is equal to gr plus or minus x. We could also have a left connection point, and that just means that y is equal to g times r, or a right connection point here where y is equal to g times r. So now let's derive the closed loop transfer function for the following block diagram. This is our standard feedback control system, which you probably saw in EC205. We use this a lot, so I want to derive this equation once and then commit it to memory because we'll use it a lot. So the equation we're going to derive is that t of s equals y of s over r of s. So the error signal e of s is equal to r of s minus h of s times y of s. That's our first equation. Our second equation is that y of s is equal to e of s g of s. So now we want to substitute equation 1 into equation 2 and we get y of s is equal to the quantity r of s minus h of s y of s times g of s. And now we want to simplify to solve this for y of s over r of s. So we're going to have t of s is equal to y of s over r of s, which equals g of s over 1 plus g of s h of s. We use this equation frequently in class, so I highly recommend that you memorize it. The prior block diagram is the most common block diagram in practical control systems. It is the closed loop transfer function, where the open loop transfer function is y of s over e of s, which equals g of s. The characteristic equation of the closed loop transfer function is the denominator of t of s, which is 1 plus g of s and h of s. It is very important because it describes the dynamics of a system and we use it a lot to find things such as poles, settling time, rise time, percent overshoot, natural frequency, etc. So now we're going to derive the transfer function for the following block diagram, but we're going to do a different technique than what we did before. For this one, we're actually going to incrementally simplify the diagram by redrawing it and then at the very end derive the transfer function. So the first thing we're going to do is note here that we have a connection point after G2. So if I redraw the block diagram, and I have R of S plus minus, and if I make this feedback right here, G2 H1, then I can redraw this part as G1. So then notice right here, I have a summer that sums G2 and G3. So on the other side of this block, I can replace that with G2 plus G3. And then output of that is G4 and Y of S. And then the last thing I do is I feed back Y of S to the summer through H2. So now we can use the feedback closed loop transfer function equation that we just derived in order to simplify this part of the block diagram. And when we do that, here we get the input R of S through the summer. Here's the positive and the negative. The part that I've circled in red 
is going to become a transfer function by itself. And the output over here is G2 plus G3. Here's G4. Here's Y of S. And here's H2. And inside of this box, what I'm going to have is G1 over 1 plus G1, G2, H1. The next step in the simplification would be to multiply all of the feed forward gains together. So here we'll have R of S into the summer. And now we have one big box that has G1 times the quantity G2 plus G3 times G4 over 1 plus G1, G2, H1. Here's my output Y of S and the feedback through H2. And now once again, we can use the equation that we just derived. And we'll have T of S is equal to G1 times the quantity G2 plus G3 times G4 over 1 plus G1, G2, H1 divided by 1 plus G1 times the quantity G2 plus G3 times G4 times H2 over 1 plus G1, G2, H1. And finally, if we simplify all this, in the numerator, we have G1 times G2 plus G3 times G4, and the denominator is 1 plus G1, G2, H1 plus G1 times the quantity G2 plus G3 times G4 times H2. And this concludes Lecture 1-1, our introduction to linear control systems.